Today we have with us um, a distinguished guest. We have uh, with us Professor Joshua Eliasberg, which is the Sebastian S. Kresge uh, Chair Professor of Marketing at the Wharton School of Business. We have a couple of topics that we'd like to discuss with you. Professor Eliasberg, can hits or blockbusters be predicted in the movie industry? What do we know about this? I think that movies or blockbusters or hits can be predicted, but one has to be very careful with this issue because when we talk about prediction, it depends at what part in the process you try to predict. When the movie has been made and it's ready for release in a theater, it's pretty straightforward to predict whether or not you have a blockbuster here. All you need to do, and we've done that, take a carefully selected sample of moviegoers, show them the movie, ask them questions related to how they enjoy the movie, how much word of mouth they're planning you know, to use in terms of telling their friends about the movie. So the point where the movie is made and it has not been released, I believe that the prediction is quite accurate. The challenge, however, becomes to predict the hit when all you have is a script. Now all you have is a storyline. You don't have the actor, director, you don't know who the you know, cast will be. Fortunately, we've done work here that tells us that it's still predictable. Obviously not with the same level of accuracy as it is in the first case that I described when it's made but has not been released yet. If you do a careful analysis of the storyline, and by that what I mean, you do content analysis. And that means you ask a number of readers to look at the script, read it carefully, and respond to a series of questions such as, is the ending surprising? Does the storyline have a conflict that is resolved in a reasonable manner? Is the storyline, you know, does it address an issue that the average moviegoer can relate to? So, series of questions, if they answer them, we get the content analysis, and that's part of the script analysis. In addition, we looked also at linguistic and semantic analysis, which means we look at how many dialogues appear in the storyline. Is there one character that really takes control over the dialogue, or they are spread evenly across the different characters you know, in the storyline? We look at how many words it takes the screenwriter to describe a scene. This is done by the computer. If you extract this information from a new script, and then you look at a database with scripts that have already been made into movies, some of them were successful, some of them flopped, but now you just look at, you know, what is this script similar to on these dimensions to what you have in the database, you can also get a fairly good prediction. Can the formula for making hits be transferred onto uh, other industries? In this business, media and entertainment, you end up dealing with a content. And a content needs a story, okay? And, you know, the story translates into different uh, media platforms. And if the execution is done carefully, it's very, very possible to see success in one platform, getting also successful results in a different uh, platforms. Books that were made into movies, novels that were very popular in print, were made into movies and also created a lot of demand. A case in point is the book by the Swedish author, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and it was very, very popular as a book. That was also very popular as a movie, which is somewhat unusual because in many cases when people read the book first and then they watch the movie, they say, I'm a bit disappointed, I expected more. This is one of the examples where people came out of the movie and said this was as good as the book that I've read. We have also examples of video games such as The Prince of Persia, Persia that were made into movies. And we have also counter examples of movies that later became uh, video games 
Star Wars would be one case in point. What are some of the latest trends uh, in Hollywood, in the movie industry, both for producers and for exhibitors? More and more movie exhibitors or cinema theaters, they install digital screens which will allow for what's called the next generation of movies, 3D movies. Avatar is one case in point. I think people like to see the experience today more realistic, more visual. And when you move to two dimensions, to three dimensions, clearly you add, you know, you enhance the experience of the movie goers in the theater. In terms of the production of the content, the distribution of the content, uh, the news are not very good these days. The way I see it, the studios, which are the major producers of content, they tend to make fewer movies, uh, bigger budget type movies, uh, less artsy type movies, more movies that appeal to teenagers, more movies that, you know, the storyline is fairly straightforward. Uh, and they produce and distribute those kind of movies. So right now the situation is not very promising to an independent movie goers, I'm sorry, to an independent movie maker, independent producer, those who are interested in telling a very unique, you know, story.